What's up guys, it's your boy Fast Lane D. And today we're gonna be checking out the GoPro Hero 9. And I wanna give y'all my honest thoughts on this versus the workhorse of my channel so far, the Hero 7. We definitely need to talk. Now the most obvious thing with the Hero 9 is that you got this awesome front facing screen so you can frame while you're filming, especially if you're doing a selfie video. Also, it shoots in 5K. What? 5K out of this little tiny camera. I think that is incredible. GoPro also went back to having a removable lens, which they didn't do on the 8, which is one of the main reasons why I skip upgrading to the 8 from my 7. I mean, with how we use these cameras on motorcycles, there's a high chance that this camera will fall off the bike at some point or your helmet. And if you bust that lens, I mean, you're kind of out of luck. You're gonna end up having to buy a whole new camera, which just didn't really make any sense for the purpose that we use these cameras for. As of right now on the GoPro website, this is going for $350 and you get a one year subscription to GoPro's new subscription service. It's kind of GoPro's way of forcing you to try out the new subscription program for a year, which I mean, I'm not complaining about at all. I will take that GoPro, thank you, thank you. If you opt to not go for that GoPro subscription, which I don't know why you wouldn't, the camera's $450, so you might as well just get the subscription and pay the cheaper price. Now the Hero 7 is currently going for $250, on GoPro's website, which just makes it $100 cheaper. Now, if you have the money, it may just be worth it to go with the Hero 9, but if you're on a budget, I think you're better off with the Hero 7. The most obvious thing when you get this camera is that it's huge. I watched a lot of videos before purchasing this camera, but until I held it in my hand and saw it, you don't realize how much bigger this camera is compared to this. On top of my head, I don't know the weights of these cameras, but I will pop them up on the screen right now. The GoPro 9 weighs this much and the GoPro Hero 7 weighs this much. And yeah, it may not seem like a lot, but you can definitely feel the difference when it's mounted to your helmet. Which if you thought your current GoPro already weighed down your helmet, <laughs> wait till you get this bad boy on there. But I mean, with all the tech that GoPro has had to put into this little camera, I mean, it kind of makes sense that it's bigger with the front facing screen, shoots in 5K, that new hyper smooth, etc., etc. Now I was hoping that GoPro wouldn't make us upgrade or change batteries because they have used the same battery for the last few cameras. But here's the battery for the GoPro Hero 9. Here's the battery for the GoPro Hero 7 slash 8. As you can tell, the GoPro Hero 9 battery is a lot bigger. It's a lot thicker. Boom, you can see the side profiles. But with the new upgrades to the Hero 9, GoPro had to upgrade the battery. So this battery supposedly lasts a little bit longer than these batteries do as well. So I had to go out and buy some new batteries for the new nine. And I had to go buy a new charger as well for my Hero 9 batteries versus the seven. But hey, that's kind of the nature of the beast. Now as far as mode of vlogging goes, do you need the front facing camera? I mean, it's nice, but I've noticed that I haven't really been using it at all while I'm out actually filming with the camera on my helmet. Now, if I'm doing a selfie shot, hey, like that, then yes, it's nice to be able to frame yourself and make sure you are perfectly in frame, but at purposes for using it on your helmet, as much as I really wanted to use it, I found that I really did not need it. Like I never needed to check the framing of the camera while it was on my helmet because the GoPro mounts on my helmet the same exact way every time. So once you get it perfectly mounted, there's no need to check it. For the purposes of motovlogging, 
5K in theory sounds awesome. Who wouldn't want to shoot in 5K if you can? But when you put this camera into 5K, it takes it out of the super view setting and puts it into a wide setting, which isn't really that wide when you're on, when the camera is strapped to your helmet. The super view setting on your GoPro allows you to have a large field of view while you're riding, which is important when you're when the camera's strapped to your helmet. Because you want to be able to see what's off to the side of the road, what's going on in the other lane of traffic, etc. etc. You want to be able to capture all of that because it makes for a more interesting video. So it's kind of sad when I put it into 5K and I realized that you cannot shoot it in super wide. So that was kind of the first knock to the GoPro Hero 9 when I got it. I also shot in 5K and I couldn't really see a difference. You guys tell me, I'm gonna drop the footage right here and you tell me if you can see the difference between the 5K and the 4K. Now both these cameras do shoot in 4K 60 frames per second, but for the purposes of motovlogging, I've never really saw a need to shoot in 60 frames per second. If you have these big Hollywood million dollar businesses shooting in 24 frames per second, why am I gonna shoot in 60 frames per second for my YouTube channel? Your eyes are used to seeing 24 frames per second second in my opinion i think 24 30 frames per second is the way to go when shooting videos now if you do want to be able to slow down your footage like i said they both shoot in 4k 60 that's where they max out in 4k so i mean you can slow them down at the same rate it's not like you can go slower with this camera now the gopro hero 9 has the new hyper smooth technology 3.0 this has hyper smooth 1.0 the gopro hero 8 i'm sure as you can guess has Hypersmooth 2.0. Now in theory, the Hypersmooth is really cool. Like the fact that you can be on a really rough surface and your camera be shaking like this. Ah! And when you play back the footage, it looks like the camera is just barely moving around. I think that that's awesome. But you already have a almost like gimbal with your neck when you're cameras on your helmet because your head isn't shaking around like this while you're riding your neck absorbs most of those vibrations and kind of naturally smooths out the footage so the hyper smooth really doesn't come in handy unless you're mounting this camera directly to your bike now i do have a harley so that harley shakes so yes if this is mounted on my harley hyper smooth is going to come in handy if this is mounted on the sport bike eh, Unless I'm riding on some really rough inner city roads, or for some reason riding off road, <laughs> then you really don't notice the difference while it's sitting on your helmet. But if you plan on using this as an accessory camera, then yes, the Hypersmooth 3.0 will come in handy. But most viewers are gonna be like, oh, he's filming a Hypersmooth 2.0. Oh, this is trash footage. Nah, nah, nah. Now the coolest thing with the GoPro Hero 9 is that you do have these little fold out tabs at the bottom. So it's easier to mount the camera to a GoPro mount versus the Hero 7. You gotta use a special different little attachment in order to be able to mount this camera. So I think that's kind of cool how they integrated that into the camera. The annoying part, which is one of the main reasons why I skipped over the Hero 8, is that you now have this door if you want to plug in a microphone so i hate opening this thing on this camera the microphone slot is now right here at the bottom so zoom in so you can see that it's right there at the bottom of the camera so if you want to plug in a microphone which you're going to want to if you're moto vlogging you got to have this up the entire time, which leaves a high chance of the battery falling out of the camera. And the battery and the memory card are also exposed to the elements. So let's say you randomly get caught in a rain shower because the weather channel sucks at predicting the weather. Because we all know the weather channel can be just a little off a lot of the time. That's just setting you up to get this stuff damaged versus the Hero 7 is awesome because the battery and memory card insert at the bottom of your GoPro here, which you can still close this door and then you have your mic plugins right here at the side of the camera. So the memory card and battery are protected versus this one. Everything's all in one. And you guys gotta remember, they're not making these cameras for us moto vloggers. We're such a small sliver of the vlogging community, especially on YouTube. They're looking at the other major groups. Now, one thing I'm super pumped about is gonna be that Max Lens mod that GoPro is coming out with. They have not dropped it yet, but you're gonna have an attachment that you can put onto the camera that's gonna allow you to see a lot more. So, 
when shooting in 5K in the future, whenever GoPro does drop that Max Lens mod, you'll be able to shoot 5K and have that super wide view. But for now, 5K is kind of useless for me and the purposes of motor vlogging because it has such a narrow field of view when you do go into the 5K setting on the camera. What's also gonna be cool is I can't wait to see what other third party companies come out with for the lens on this camera. I have a feeling there are gonna be some cool attachments that you'll be able to do once they have a little more time to kind of experiment with the different lens modifications on this camera. So we're gonna compare how these cameras do in different light settings. So we'll start with daytime, then we'll go to the nighttime. And you guys might be surprised here. So you tell me which footage you think is better out of these two cameras. Now I'm gonna try and let the cameras do the talking here most so, but on the left, we have the Hero 7. On the right, we have the Hero 9. And you can just look at the bike. I mean, look how much of a deeper, richer black the 9 picks up in the bike than the 7. Look at the road, look at the grass, look at the cars, look at the trees. The colors just look a lot more vibrant on the Hero 9. And this next clip is gonna show the same exact thing. Look at the sky, look at the roads. Once again, look at the differences in the blacks, the grass on the side, look at that building, the yellow porter potty. The Hero 9 picks up a much more accurate image of what I'm seeing with my eyes as I'm riding, which I hope it does. I mean, it's the more expensive new updated camera. And as we go from light to dark there, you can just see that the Hero 9 does better with that. Look at the building to the left. The roof is a lot more red in the 9, which is, once again, a more accurate depiction of what I'm seeing. Look at the trees, it's fall. Like you wanna be able to see the color changing in the leaves. This makes for a lot better of an image. Look at the yellow line here. As we pass, look at this truck on the left. Look at the difference between the blues. You can see it just looks a lot richer in the nine. Look at the car in front of me. In the Hero 7, it almost looks black versus the Hero 9, it's a navy blue. Now as we ride into the sunset here, eh, both cameras do okay with it. I mean, it's a freaking action cam. What do you expect? But I do think the Hero 7 looks a little bit better. Now as we transition here into a little bit of a darker shot, look at the yellow line on the road. It looks richer, the green lights being emitted from ivy look a little bit richer. The trees, I mean everything just looks better on the Hero 9 during the day. Now, I'm on my R1, it's nighttime. We got the infamous yellow headlights, baby. Uh, love those things. But I was surprised here. I'm not gonna lie between these two cameras. I think the seven looks better at night than the nine. Now you guys tell me what you think down below, but I really like the picture quality out of the seven here. It's a, once again, more accurate depiction of what I'm seeing. That's how the yellow looks when I'm riding versus on the right. It just looks a little bit more deeper and almost washed out. And even on these roads, same thing. The left is what I'm actually seeing when I'm riding with my headlights. And the picture on the left, I mean, it picks up the light a lot better in a darker setting. Like I go seven over the nine based on this image alone all day long. Now, as we go here, you can definitely see that the colors look deeper in the nine, but the flatter profile of the seven just makes for a better image at night. Look at the trees. You see how much better the green looks in the nine? And I'm sure there's a way you can go to the settings of the nine and make it a flatter profile color at night, but we're just doing this testing based off of the OEM settings that you get from GoPro when you open the camera. Yep, came to a complete stop. Good job, fast lane. That was, that's not me on the bike. That's, that's fast lane, do you know who that is? Some random dude. But anyways, I mean, look 
at that. I mean, my headlights almost look white in the Hero 9 versus the Hero 7. This was honestly shocking to me if you couldn't tell. And as we ride here in the darkness, with oncoming traffic, the headlights almost look blue with the 9. Versus on the 7, they have more of a true, accurate white color. We're going to have another car pass here. I mean, look at the difference. You got the blue and you got the white. Once again, my headlights look washed out in the 9. Versus in the 7, it looks more accurate to what I'm seeing. And the GoPro settings are the same for both of these cameras. Now, for those of you that are true fast lane D subscribers, you know that last clip didn't end well. That's when my chain exploded on the R1. We don't want to talk about that though. But you guys tell me, which camera do you think is better? I think the 7 is better suited for someone that is on a budget, wants to get into moto vlogging, and just needs a camera to strap to their helmet. I think the 9 is better suited for someone that plans on doing a lot of off-camera stuff and wants to make sure they're in frame and wants to make sure that they get the best cinematic, high-quality image. But if you just need a camera to strap onto your helmet, the 7 is definitely the way to go, in my opinion. Saves you some money and it still gets the same point across. But comment down below what y'all think. That's all I got for y'all. Fast lane, these out, baby. Peace.